and benefit the people who issue the utility tokens and the inve investors who buy them. But until then, which it takes a long time, um, we are all under one government and we're going to follow the rules of the government. And that's what we do as low abiding citizens. You can keep the mic. Um, all right, let's move forward. So, Howard, this one I think you, you should also start because it starts with Start Engine. So, Start Engine, T0, Polymath, and other platforms out there, are both in the US and abroad, are looking to offer ATS services, alternative uh, trading, in the near future. And I know you're working on this. With that said, how do you see this unfolding? Could you tell us a little bit about it? Right. So, let me explain to the audience here what, what, what we're talking about. So, in order to trade a security, you have, you have two choices. You can go on an exchange, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange. Um, unfortunately, there are only 20 in this country that are uh, registered with the SEC. 20, and if you want to create a new exchange, it can take years, years, five years, I don't know, a long time. However, there's a new rule. So if you're a broker dealer, there are about 3,000 of them in this country, you can create a thing called the Alternative Trading System, ATS. That's permitted and you can trade securities on it, but you have to be a broker dealer. Now, what does it mean to be a broker dealer? That means that you've registered with the SEC, FINRA came in, did a whole review of you. Everybody who's involved with selling or trading has to take a series 7, 63, maybe even a 24, maybe a 79. These are all off fun to do. I recommend you try it. Um, I did, you, you did it. I have all four. He has all four. I'm, <laughs> I'm going his way. I'm doing the 24 uh, March 19th. So that's going so to be sell me actually muni so, so sell me actually kind of muni binds now? Are you going to start selling insurance too? <laughs> no, I can sell you uh, uh, securities. I can yeah, sell you, you can sell munis, munis. Secu munis. I can't sell you insurance, unfortunately. Okay, well, you don't have the insurance license yet. No, no. Anyway, and so I'm happy to advise you on, on your investments. <laughs> so anyway, so now here's what's exciting about this. And I, and, I, and I want to do this really in a way, I'm not here to promote Start Engine. That's not what, I, I'm not interested in this. I'm here to hopefully bring in my perspective that can help you uh, in the audience uh, bring away, take away something. The ATS is a great solution for this problem of the conundrum we talked about, which is what do you do with a securities token? How do you trade it? Because without liquidity, I agree, it's awful to be able to make an investment and wait seven years. It just doesn't make sense. So the ATS will allow you to trade securities. Now, who, there are three companies that announced they're doing it. There will be many, many more. And guess what's going to happen? As soon as all these companies go live and thousands and thousands of investors go on those systems, start trading those tokens, and create a liquidity marketplace, it's going to solve the thing. Now, the pro now, one of the benefits of an ATS is you can look for things like pump and dump. So go on Telegram, type pump, and you'll see how you're getting ripped off when you're buying tokens because people are getting together at a certain time to buy tokens to rise the price, and then you go in because you see the thing rising, and then, of course, they sell it before you do. And then there's insider trading like Coinbase, where people were literally, they knew Bitcoin Cash was going to be supported and they bought it before everybody knew it. That's insider trading. Now, all those things are not permitted in general, but even less when you're a broker dealer. And so, guess what? It's going to make a better marketplace for everybody. So I'm writing an article about that. You, you, hopefully you'll see it soon on my blog. I'm, I'm putting down all those fraud schemes that exist today that you should know about. Wait, so I, I just want to say one thing. That's very good. Um, so being a person who actually worked at the exchange, and I was there for, se for seven years, I worked with the NAC for, for many years, uh, I'm just telling you right now that there are, that there are still pump, you know, actually pump and dumps on the markets. The heavily regulated markets are still pump and dumped. And, you know, the fact is, is that I do agree that we have to migrate towards the regulator because the regulator is coming down the path. What I don't really think about, or what I don't like, is the way that they're, they're actually doing it. I think it's inconsistent, and I think it, it, it's poor management. So if they do it, so I, I do like the fact that the security token is going to exist, but again, what is the rights of a security token? There's no shareholder rights. It, it, it doesn't make any sense in some ways to someone like me who has dealt with corporate governance issues and proxy fights issues. It's like, why do you want... The only thing that you're doing is you're buying and, and selling a token like it's a currency. A, a currency doesn't have rights, but then you want to regulate the people who put the currency out. So it's, it's very, to me, it's still very kind of nascent 
And I think that we will move towards that day, but um, it's going to take the SEO a, a long time for now. You want to do this the kind of security token? Do it. But just make sure that you have good actual legal kind of you know, actual representation and also make sure that you go through a registered broker dealer. Do not let people raise you money who are not registered. That's probably the number one thing. The number one thing to walk away with here, do not let somebody who's not registered raise you money. You will get in trouble. And also, when you start marketing, do not use sponsored content that does not disclose how much they've actually been paid and who they've been paid by. Those are probably the two get out of jail free cards I just, I'll just leave you with. Bye. <laughs> I just have a quick comment. Uh, I know that there are a lot of UCLA students here. I remember my student days. Uh, if you need any money, take Howard's advice, go on Telegram and find some pump and dump schemes and then report them to the SEC because the SEC is now offering bounties. So. Uh, awesome. Great. So, hey, you know, if you make a little scratch, look me up, you know. <laughs> hey, would you care to? Uh... Uh, I mean, it's kind of what I said before. I mean, it's just, it's, it's really complicated, this, this, this forum of, you know, we have obviously pretty strong opinions here. Um, you know, I, I think, yeah, the ideal would be that there's something down the middle, that there's a different thing than a full-blown security and something more regulated than a utility token because everyone needs to, there needs to be adult supervision, things are kind of running wild. And so far the SEC, I mean I would, I said disagree with a little bit with the panel, I think they've actually done a decent job so far. They could, they could make it a lot clearer for sure. Um, but they actually haven't, you know, and I, and I having a broker dealer still, unfortunately, um, we have a lot of very highly paid uh, SEC consultants and they've somewhat more intelligently than I expected taken the approach of, we did, you know, the U.S. government did a pretty good job of not ruining the first internet. You know, that's why we have Google, Facebook, you know, Microsoft, whatever. Um, and they've actually taken a more of a hands-off approach than I expected. Like, it's, it's, this has lasted way longer than I would have ever thought, co coming from a you know, guy that owns a broker-dealer. Um, like, I thought this would be over, like, instantly, you know, as soon as some of these things started coming out. And so I give the government a teeny bit of credit. Maybe they're just slow. But they, they didn't break it. They, they are making examples of the right people should be examples of. BitConnect should have gone down. A lot of other strange ones went down and should have. Um, we're, and we're pure scams. A lot more scams yet to be uncovered. Um, but it's, actually, it's been relatively refreshing to me. I don't know if you guys agree that like, they haven't actually crushed the whole thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I do agree. Okay. Awesome. Wait till the subpoenas start coming out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but, but somebody is, is, is definitely like pandering to, to the SEC right now, right? No, are we always? pandering? <laughs> oh, me? Oh, yeah. No, no. I already have a license. I can actually do all the stuff I want to do in a security oh, good. World, yeah. But, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Are, are, are you actually registered also? Yeah, I owned an investment bank that I sold a year, long story. I sold an investment bank a year and a half ago to a big tech bank in China, but I'm still CEO of it for another six months. I'm really trying hard to get fired. Like, I, I'm so begging them. I try to screw things up and well, that, sign Mickey Mouse every document, but they, I'm still CEO for six more months and rest of my earn out. Well, that's cool, though. Um, so I am a full broker dealer, a Series 24, on down, whatever. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm ready to re give up all those licenses as fast as I humanly possibly can, so. If you're looking for a job, DNA is hiring. <laughs> yes, I, yeah, I know. Scott, Scott's been recruiting me for months. <laughs> and I'm going the other way, so you should tell me what you know. Yeah, it's horrible. It's horrible. Don't do it. <laughs> so there, everybody told me not to start Star Engine because no one will ever invest stock in stocks online with a credit card. No one will ever, you know, you always hear that. So all the young people here, uh, when you hear that, that's when you do it. Start the business when everybody tells you it's the worst idea they've ever heard. And <laughs> seriously, because that's, that's the counter. I mean, you see that all the time, right, with your investments. It, it counters basically... The, the general consensus. And, and if you look at the whole crypto world, that's what they did. They went against the consensus. The 1.0 people did an amazing job in the crypto world. We needed them. They're not the most obvious people when you meet them. They are a little bit more rogue. But you know what? We needed them. But now, 2.0 needs to happen. And in, in order for that to happen, why does it need to happen? It's because we need to make this market 10 times, 100 times bigger. Right now, it's, it's what, 300? billion dollars 500. 500 billion okay 500 billion right, <laughs> yeah exactly last week was 300 500 billion sounds like a lot of money between all of us but it's not when you look at the trillions and trillions of dollars in the real equities and debt market so 
if we want to go to that large number, which you will participate, all of you here, we need to grow up and do 2.0 and, and look at regulation seriously and say, look, we may not like it, but it's here. So let's figure out intelligently the best way to take advantage of it. And that's why the ATS is, I think, is going to be successful because it's legal, it works. What we have to figure out is what David was saying is the costs. How do you reduce all the costs down to pennies? That's really the, going to be the key, and that's what I'm personally passionate about working on. Excellent. So now let's uh, start with Tatiana. Um, could you guys all comment on shifting strategies of ICOs? Um, you see a lot of airdrop trends going on. How does this play into the compliant environment of securities law? I think this is a, is a very great topic for you guys to share your experience with the audience here. Yeah, so I think we've all had different experiences with this. I'm personally uh, being mindful of the shift towards security tokens. I think in 2018, we're gonna see much larger ICOs. So the average ICO has been um, 20 to $30 million. Um, I think we're gonna start seeing ICOs that are 300 million plus. I mean, take uh, Telegram, for example. I mean, Telegram was completely out of whack, uh, but I believe that they're closing it at $2 billion with a B, uh, which is kind of crazy. But I think we'll see some viable businesses, um, established businesses in energy and transportation and other types of infrastructure industries going out and raising securities tokens um, to help their businesses run. And what that will allow is it'll allow unaccredited investors around the world to have investment opportunities that were only reserved previously to the elite. And so that's why I'm personally really excited about it. So I can kind of give like a, a quick background for anybody that's not familiar with how airdrops work. So um, probably the biggest airdrop that just happened, really proud of, uh, of Tatiana Ever. and myself, and also Everpedia. Dave's been kind of involved, um, was the Everpedia deal. So Everpedia is kind of like a version of Wikipedia. Yeah, some people up in the back know about this. Um, Everpedia is really awesome. It's kind of like a version of Wikipedia where you get paid in tokens for making great edits. And uh, they went to go out and raise $30 million, and a company, EOS, came in and they've done the largest, um, the largest deal to date. Um, and it's actually still an open ICO. They're doing an ICO for a year. And, um, and what they did is they just said, all right, well, we're going to give you $30 million to develop Everpedia on the EOS platform. And then we're going to automatically give away these Everpedia tokens to all the EOS holders. And that's a way of distributing these tokens so that they're not quite securities. They're not quite utilities. I'm not sure they have names yet. No one paid for them. Yeah. No one paid for them, so there's no jurisdiction. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no, no case. Right. Oh, go ahead. Oh, so yes, Everpedia is, a, is an amazing development in crypto. It's one of my favorite. I talk about it a lot. And there is, you know, there's probably another five or so we're actually working on right now. Scott, the chairman, the just chairman now of DNA, is also my partner in the crypto funds. This is this is almost entirely a DNA panel. Um, <laughs> so. Um, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's a little incestuous, sorry, Howard. Um, <laughs> so the, the really cool thing about Arapedia, like first thing about the company side, they got all the money they wanted in literally a few meetings, they get, but way more importantly, because they could have got the money anyway, it's a pretty cool project, they, you know, EOS has something like 300,000, David Moss would probably know, individual token holders around the world, and they're one of the eight or nine most widely held tokens in the world. So Arapedia would be one of the eight or nine most widely held tokens in the world, day one. Uh, which is insane. I mean, this is a, play, a sector that trades entirely on sentiment and signal. Um, so if it's one of the most known and held tokens in the world, it'll probably instantly be one of the top 100. It'll probably get listed on many major exchanges, which helps token value, liquidity, and you know, to, you know helps uh, increase you know, valuations. Um, so it's you know, a huge home run for Everpedia, and they have a regulatory get out of free jail card because no one bought the tokens. Um, literally. Just, just to back up here for those that are not familiar, EOS essentially built uh, its own blockchain that is a competitor to Ethereum. Block One built EOS. We have the CTO of Block One here correcting me. Hi, David. <laughs> 
Um, so EOS is a competitor to Ethereum, and our thesis is that EOS will overtake Ethereum. So if any of you in the market for new tokens, this is one of my favorites. And what EOS started was actually a fund on the side to invest in projects that were building on that in their blockchain that they believed in. And Everpedia was the first, and we hope to see many more. And if you are interested in coming to talk to DNA about that, or David Moss, who's the CTO, he's down here if you want to ask questions about EOS, or come, come chat with us after. Yeah, so I, I just want to come up with, so going back to the same question. So we've seen, uh, so because we have about 60 clients right now that are actually active, we're like the most active PR company. Uh, but what that does is it gives us a lot of deal flow, and on the kind of Millennium blockchain side, um, I'm actually doing a really interesting asset where I'm taking actually pri I'm, I'm taking actually public stock. It, it, it's actually restricted for six months or maybe even more, and I'm trading it for tokens or I'm, I'm trading it for tokens that I can then actually convert into actually equity in that company. So we're starting to see already, and then Swarm Fund is going to take my asset class and we're going to start to actually tokenize it on the Swarm Fund you know, platform as a other type of security. So there's, you're going to start seeing more kind of interesting, wall, like what I would call Wall Street kind of financial, you know, the kind of financial engineering. On the ICO side, the most protected approach is to have two two tokens. One is a security token, uh, which is could be be tied to to actually equity, and then you airdrop the kind of utility token, so it's given away as the token to create the ecosystem for whatever you're trading or using it for, so that it truly becomes a, 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 a token that's being used. The other idea that I was talking to someone about and I thought was pretty interesting is create the utility token, don't do the ICO, create the utility of it. So start giving it out to people, have them start using it in your platform, whatever that platform is, and then take a portion of it, which, with, which you have locked away, and then use that to raise money. Post that, that first actual kind of development. Because at that point, it is definitely a kind of utility token and it, because you, you've just taken it and it's already being used. So that's one of the other ideas that has come out. So there's shifts happening, um, and then kind of derivatives. There's a lot of derivatives that are being talked about. Howard? I see Amy cringing a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yes? I, I do believe that there are utility tokens. It's just you have to look at how that is. Do you believe in unicorns? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then you do. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I agree with David on, 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 the, on what he was talking about, this whole extraordinary idea of companies um, actually raising money now uh, without an ICO. They're just basically um, getting money from blockchains like, like EOS was ben mentioned, and, and that's an amazing development. I, I, I'm fascinated by that, and um, I'm, I'm thinking of doing a little bit of uh, research in it and maybe writing an article, because I don't think the marketplace really understands this. Um, this is, I think, what illustrates the extraordinary side of the blockchain and cryptocurrencies. That there's, we just scratched the surface. There's so many more things we can do with it, and you will see that in the next year or two. I mean, now you have EOS going to be compared to Ethereum, and there's another one, uh, other blockchains coming out. But then um, you're going to see applications coming out. Now they're not just blockchains; they're actually real things that you could use in the, in, in, in your lifestyle, and so I'm excited, you know, personally of, of being part of it because we have a lot of companies who come and see us and they want to talk about raising capital and there's many more ways today we, to raise money than it existed five, six years ago. And this is a win for entrepreneurs like you guys. So you guys are the winners. And I think, take it very seriously, this is a very important development for all of you. Now, you know, my perspective is that regulation matters and you should try, try, follow it, but that's not, that's my opinion. That's not necessarily what any of you may want to do or not do. Uh, so please keep in mind that it's more my opinion. I stand firm behind it. Everything I wrote on my blog, I stand firm behind it. You know, a lot of people, I get criticisms. I get a lot of people who write uh, nice, n nasty messages. But at the same time, I'm okay because that's the conversation we need. Excellent. Um, then we got two more questions and open to the audience. 
This is one of my favorite questions, and I think one that is going to bring a lot of value to the audience. So to the panelists, to your experience, what do you think are the best practices, terms, investment terms, um, associated costs, and timing of doing a security ICO, or if you want to talk about a utility ICO, and how this will change in the next 12 to 18 months? So how do you see what's best practice now and how it will change in the next year, two so year and a half? So I can talk about just actually, kind of, I, I can start with actually taking a company public. So it, it depends on how it's structured. But to file a, a Reg A plus or to file the S1, you're talking about a significant amount of time. Maybe, but it's not that much more time than maybe doing a really good, a really good ICO. So you're probably about six months. Um, it could be a, a, a little bit longer. There are ways to go around the S1, and I don't want to get too kind of technical here, but when people go IPO, they file an S1, and then it has to come back for comments from the SEC. If you file something called a Form 10, you can get trading in less than 60 days with no comments. They'll make comments, but there's no law stopping you from trading. So that's another way to do it. And then there are other ways to do it, the kind of restricted, like I took over a public vehicle that's sitting on the pink sheet. It's not a shell, it's a, it's a vehicle, and I'm using that vehicle to restructure it. I mean, so there's a lot of different vehicles there on the public side. I'm assuming that on the, the kind of securitized token side with the regulation and the way it's structured, uh, the scrutiny will be about as hard as a, 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 a kind of regulation A+, plus, which is something that's part of, of the actual Jobs Act, um, and could take maybe three to four months to six months. That, that's my opinion. You definitely want to have the right attorneys involved. You definitely want to be running, if you're doing a security token, you want to run on a security token exchange or uh, an ATS, like, like a start engine. There aren't many, there are, it's, it, it takes them six months to become the ATS. So if someone's telling you I'm going to become one and they just filed it like last week, nah, that's not going to happen. So you have to be able to kind of navigate that world a bit and make sure that you're going on, on the right platform. I think even T0 is still expecting another couple of months be, before they're ready. So in the meantime, you have to think about, well, if I start doing it now, you know, what could happen? And there's probably a backlog. I think there's already a backlog of a bunch of S1s and, um, that are, are starting to file. And then you can also do a confidential filing of an S1 so no one knows that you've actually, that you've, you've actually filed it. But again, we're, we're blending, this is the other weird thing for me, we're blending the private and public markets extremely, in, a, in, an, in an extreme sense. So that's the only thing that I'm a little bit concerned about. Because the cost of being public versus the cost of being private with some basic kind of disclosure um, is, uh, is, could be uh, uh, you know, the difference in the actual company's EBITDA. So that's my issue. What Enzo's trying to say is it's really, really complicated. <laughs> um, I want to take a moment and talk about lockups for a second because I think we're seeing more and more lockups and explain um, to maybe some folks that are unfamiliar with those why they're happening. So there's something called the Howey test. I don't know if Amy covered that on her panel. Um, that it essentially, if you're investing in something with the expectation that it goes up in value, then it, it's a security, right? So if you're buying utility so token, but it's not really used for anything um, until six months down the road when the platform is launched, it becomes a security because you're only buying it to see how high it can go in price. And so what we're seeing now is lockups on those tokens. So for anyone familiar with the startup space, um, Y Combinator inv invented the safe. So we're seeing, which is a future promise of equity, we're seeing something called a SAFT, which is a future promise of a token. And so you're getting these SAFTs for your utility tokens rather than getting the tokens themselves. And the company will say, okay, we plan to release the tokens in 90 days or six months, however long it, uh, they plan to build the platform. And then on top of that lockup, uh, sometimes you'll have a rolling lockup where you can sell 10% um, every nine days and on and on and on. We're seeing further provisions uh, taking place where if a company fails to put out a platform that you can actually use your utility token on, your investment, because at that point it's an investment, converts into equity or is refunded. So Telegram, for example, had a clause where if they fail to build the platform that they promised, which 
let's face it, may very well happen, given they've made very big promises to a lot of people, they actually have to refund all of their tokens. Um, and then another smaller ICO that we worked on at DNA said, if we don't build our platform, we'll convert your investment into equity. So that part has been really fascinating to me. And as we're structuring new deals at DNA, um, those are some of the structures we're playing around with to keep the SEC happy. All right, guys, let's just make this brief because we are ready are out of time. Um, so you asked a lot of questions. I'll, I'll pick like where I see the space going, I guess. And the one thing I don't hear a lot about at conferences, um, it always kind of surprises me, I come from more of a corporate world, is there's, there's a huge amount of corporate blockchain initiatives coming that are going to be really, really big in this space. You know, I mean, you know, Facebook has sort of not really announced anything, but the, you know, they have a huge team working on it, Amazon, Microsoft, you know. And I'm not talking about their, their kind of like public uh, blockchain projects, but they're their own kinds of tokens and, and, and whatnot. And there's also this huge wave, I don't hear much people talking about, around patents that are coming. So blockchain is actually a really old technology, 30 years old. Um, there's a lot of prior art. I see almost no startups so far that are doing any kind of reviews of prior art um, and then going out and raising you know, huge sums of money. Um, so I was talking to a few patent lawyers last week on one deal and there's this huge wave of patents about to come after the blockchain space. Um, and no one's been careful. <laughs> um, so it's going to be, there's a lot of interesting things coming in a big way. You asked about security tokens. Security tokens will happen. Um, it'll take longer than everybody expects. The lack of liquidity is, a death, is, is deadly. We have, uh, we have three companies we invested in that were planning on doing security tokens and did their ICO and that was documented. And then they switched it to a utility token because they'd be dead if they launched. They can't, they can't, the price can't rise. No one can trade it. No one, and even with, you know, we're pretty close with T0, maybe they'll be looking at some like longer tail tokens, like not like the very, you know, top like five or whatever, uh, maybe in like nine months. You know? right. So if, if you launch a token that no one can do anything with for a really long period of time, it's, it's difficult. All right. Tim, do we have time for one more question? No. Nope. <laughs> All right. So we got cut off by here by our organizers, but that's uh, fine. I would like to thank everyone. I would like to thank the panelists.